So far in this chapter, we've talked about a lot of definitions, so we know we're talking about thermochemistry. Again, just as a reminder, thermodynamics is a more broad definition. Thermo thermodynamics itself is where we're studying energy and its transformations. So just very general, very broad. It deals with not only how energy is transferred, but why energy is transferred and when it can be transferred. On the other hand, thermochemistry, which is what this chapter is focusing on, examines how that energy is transferred. We calculate an amount of heat absorbed or released during a chemical reaction. In this chapter, we're focusing on enthalpy. Enthalpy is going to be a concept we're going to define in this section. And enthalpy helps us understand how energy is transferred. In second semester chemistry, second semester general chemistry, you're going to study entropy and Gibbs free energy. And you're going to discuss why energy is transferred and when can energy actually be transferred. So enthalpy. Enthalpy is defined as a capital H, so we don't use an E for enthalpy. We have too many E's in this unit, so we'd use H. If you see capital H, this is enthalpy. To understand enthalpy, I need you to start with your first law. The first law tells us that the change in energy is equal to Q plus W. Q being work. I mean, sorry, I said that backwards. Q being heat, W being work. And rearrange that equation and solve for Q, so solve for heat we get delta E minus W equals Q. Under constant volume conditions, no PV work can be done. So again, PV work, pressure volume work, module two, um, module seven, seven B, I guess is its technical name. So if you're confused about PV work, go back and watch module um, seven B. But under constant volume conditions, no PV work can be done because we cannot have a change in volume if the volume is constant. Many chemical reactions occur under constant pressure conditions. If we have an open container, we're working in a lab, and that system is open, that is under atmospheric pressure, so that is under constant pressure conditions. Expansion work under constant pressure conditions, W equals negative P delta V. So under constant pressure, our work is equal to negative pressure times change in volume. Under constant pressure conditions, we can substitute this in, for W into our equation here. So we're going to substitute that in and we get Q under constant pressure conditions, that sub P means constant pressure, is equal to our change in energy minus W, which is negative P delta V. I've got a negative minus a negative here, so it gives me a positive. It's change in E plus P delta V. Again, change in E is change in energy. E is pressure, change in V is volume final, minus volume initial. And Q sub P means heat under constant pressure conditions. So enthalpy, again, we have this term enthalpy. Q sub P means heat flow under constant pressure conditions. I know I've written it, I've said it multiple times, but I need you to just remember, if you see that sub P, it means constant pressure conditions. V would mean constant volume. Here, we're gonna define a thermodynamic property, specifically enthalpy. We can t say, Delta H, our change in enthalpy is equal to Q at constant pressure conditions. So our change in enthalpy is equal to the heat of the reaction under constant pressure conditions. Delta H equals delta E plus P delta V. Also can be written as delta H equals Q sub P because Q sub P equals this. So H again, enthalpy, 
delta H is your enthalpy change. Delta E or delta H can also be known as heat of reaction. And we can monitor that. We can monitor how much a reaction heats up or cools down. And delta E is the change in the total energy of your system. Again, we often look for change in energy because bottom line, it's really hard to determine the heat of a single particle. So it's much easier to determine the heat of a, the change in heat of a system than a single particle. These systems get very complex, so even looking for a single particle is pretty difficult to do. We also need you to just understand these. These are just definitions. You need to have them memorized. So we have the thermodynamic property called enthalpy. We know delta H equals Q sub P. If delta H is greater than zero, if our change in energy is positive, it is an endothermic reaction. If delta H is less than zero, the reaction is exothermic. This goes back to your system. So remember I told you guys, pretend that your system, you are the system. If Q goes in, you're positive and happy about it. If delta H is greater than zero, it is an endothermic reaction, which means that Sorry, this means that the system gained heat from the surroundings. What it actually feels like is it feels like your system got cold. So if you have, a, say you have a beaker and you dissolve some potassium chloride in it. Potassium chloride, in, um, when it dissolves, is endothermic. The glass itself, the liquid it's in, will feel cold. That's because the actual reaction is the particles of potassium ion and chloride ion dissolving in water and being solvated by the water molecules. The system itself is that KCL. The water and the beaker holding the water is your, is your surroundings. The surroundings get cold. The surroundings are giving their heat to your system. It is an endothermic reaction. The system, which we cannot very easily directly measure, is gaining that heat. If heat leaves our system, this is a negative value. We lost our heat. The reaction is exothermic. So these ones are easier for students to understand. Um, the way it would feel in a lab is like if you dissolve sodium hydroxide, it's an exothermic solution and so when it solvates those part of those ions it actually releases heat and the system itself the glassware gets hot it feels warm to touch and you'll see in a reaction the temperature will increase as the reaction proceeds so you need to be careful with these you need to know these differences and you need to understand I know an exothermic because they come back all year they come back throughout chemistry truthfully but you're going to see them again later later this semester next semester as well Okay, and delta H and Q. We really do need to understand this difference between delta H and Q. There are two important differences between delta H and Q. First, delta H is a state function. Q is not a state function. Remember what we said about a state function. A state function doesn't care how you got there. It just cares where you are right at this moment. So if I need to come to work, these drawings are getting worse and worse, and I'm currently at home, If I take the direct path, like this morning I drive around and stop at QT, if I decide there's a lot of traffic and I want to go this direction, it doesn't matter. TCU does not care how I got here as long as I'm here on time and I do my job. My gas tank, however, cares which way I went because it's going to take more gas if I go a different direction, right? My time cares how which way I went. What time I leave the house depends on which way I'm going to drive to work. So those things would be non-state functions because they're dependent upon the path I take. Not a state function means it's path dependent. State functions mean it is path independent. And delta H is heat flow under constant pressure conditions, whereas Q is heat flow under any conditions at all.